I'm like, what was that whole interaction? What was that? <laughs> what was that? Why did that happen? Turn into Don John Tron a little bit. <laughs> what? 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 <laughs> Hello and welcome to the 11th episode of Good Bad or Bad Bad, the show where we watch terrible movies and accidentally steal Nostalgia Critic's lines. I'm your host, Brian. He's my co-host, Mr. Kyle Hinton. Hope everybody's doing great. We watched motherfucking Overkill for this episode. The 1987 Not Miami Vice ripoff. He wears a nice white blazer, though, at one point. When he is wearing anything, he wears blazer a nice white great. blazer. And I was like, yeah, that's a little Miami Vice-y. But yes, Overkill, 1987. Hard-boiled detective mixed with like an action honor I don't know what the hell this film for, is supposed to be. It's a very strange movie. It, uh... Yeah, I had a hard time following it and getting what it was cuz i guess the biggest thing to get right into it the biggest problem with this movie or the weirdest thing about this movie is how it is edited it's so quick it it's <laughs> everything happens instantly it's like yeah the like scenes just start and then characters are in one location and then transport to a different and different and different and different times and it's it's so disjointed that it's it's almost impossible to follow there's there's literally a scene that takes place at like night and then a scene that happens during the day, and then literally the next cut, about 20 seconds later, is at night again. Yeah. It, it's so str- I was like, I was, wait a second. It, uh, I guess they just filmed this whenever they could film, and then that's what time of day it was when they sure, filmed that scene. Because anyway, <laughs> so overkill. Detectives Daryl Hall and John Oates. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, that's what they they look, like. look almost ex- exactly like Hall and Oates. Yes, and uh, so they they go to Little Tokyo to do some investigation. It looks, to the I think, Yakuza. to do some investigation into getting some sushi. <laughs> and that's what they're sushi. doing. Yeah. they're just yeah. eating. Well, like the, it opens up with that monologue by the one. Yeah, everybody's got a style, and in this town you get all kinds. I've worked the force for over twenty years, mostly undercover, and I've seen it all. Okay, that, I thought that was the main character. I, yeah, same initially. here. I thought it was the main character, and then it's like, no, he barely has anything he's, to do with the story. He's kind of a super secondary character, and I got really confused because I was like, oh, is this going to be like a voiceover, like almost noir, like because it's like that, uh, like uh, the mean streets of L.A. and uh, there had this detective, and he used to, and, it, and I was like, oh, it's like a, a hard boiled like detective story, and we're gonna have a voiceover throughout. And that's the only no, voice that well that, and then again at the end, I was like, well, okay, and that's not the main character. It's just a guy. Whatever. Last year, I was put in charge of a task force on organized crime. Another Asian import. The, the sushi place they go to is, I guess, being, like, shooken down for protection money. Leave us alone! Everyone else has accepted our protection. The Togos, the Anasakis, the Masaharus, the Samikos. Yeah. By the local Yakuza? Yeah. And <laughs> these guys... Oh, boy. They are the the yin to our good guys yang there's these two gangster guys that are part of the yakuza throughout the film that dude the main yakuza bad guy has the has the craziest japanese mullet I yes think I've he's ever got a seen. fucking badass japanese mullet and he's always shirtless and oiled up and ready we're wearing to party. a tank top <laughs> i maybe in a scene literally 90 every time these guys are on screen these two guys they are always shirtless and always glistening. And I was, I was really, I mean, there's a lot of shirtless dudes in this movie. Yeah. Like a whole lot to the point where it almost felt like the one time they have a shirtless woman, it was like lip service for like. <laughs> well, like there's scenes, there's literally scenes where the Yakuza member, like the families are gathering. Yeah. And everybody's in nice business suits except for this <laughs> one just guy. guy. One guy who was just, shirtless. <laughs> It's like why is going, is that a thing that that I guess if you look like that you just walk around shirtless always in the eighties because that's like, how. Anyways, they come in, shake down the owners for protection money. They don't. They're like, we're not gonna deal with you guys. So instead of just doing what you'd expect is like a refusal and then a retaliation, she pulls out a fucking. She gun. pulls out a gun. Hold it. 
and just points it at him. I guess she's like holding him up to call police she's or call whatever. She's going to call the police. And then just pull out a gun and shoot. What do you think was going to happen? Because she does a terrible job of, she pulls out a gun on him and then goes, I, I'm going to call the police now. And then goes. And like looks away from, and I'm like, what? and then they shoot her. It's like, of course they shot her. Because what did, what did you think was gonna happen? You don't pull a gun on two gangsters and then look away from them. <laughs> like that's a terrible idea. And then so she gets shot, and then the fucking old guy that's like the cook gets a fucking bullet right in the dome. And I was like. Overkill. <laughs> Another movie we're living up to the name because uh, the old guy didn't do shit. The old guy is just standing <laughs> yes. there, and, and they just shoot him right in the they, forehead. They rush out. Uh, gunfire ensues. They strike one of the dudes down in the back. They yes. Just, <laughs> then they fight over who actually killed him. The yeah, Hollow yeah. Our, our two par- our two buddy cops. <laughs> they shoot at him and kill one of them. And so I, now we're at a point where they're there. We find out that this was. was kind of part of their investigation yeah and they're looking into this protection racket and all this other crap that you could right yeah because there's gangsters they're investigating these gangsters and they're undercover cops they're they're both (laughs) undercover which is what allows their their choice of of undercover clothing they're i the the reason they're undercover cops is i'm pretty sure explicitly just so that guy can be shirtless the whole movie because you can't be a real cop and be shirtless the whole time his his cut off tank top that he made he literally took a t-shirt and made a tank top yeah yeah that's mickey delano he's our main character delano delano something like that he's the main character and he's the guy that looks like oats and kind of also he looks like uh like freddie mercury stunt (laughs) man freddie mercury was doing a movie and But they, like, literally the only reason they're undercover cops, because they don't really do anything undercover. No. They just do regular cop yeah, stuff and run around and exactly. shoot people. But the only reason they're undercover is so that they don't have to wear uniforms in the movie and they can just be shirtless the whole time. I'll tell you, if your casual attitude's going to get us screwed. Can't you take anything serious? Yeah, sex, drugs, and rock and roll. It is, and even when he's in the station, he doesn't have a badge. No. And, oh, we got to, I want to talk about the station Okay, so half the time this guy is always at odds with his superior. Yeah. I'm talking major organized crime. Major organized crime. Are you out of your fucking mind? Are you crazy? Are you out of your mind? Who and they're like, you you fucking off the case. <laughs> you know, whatever bullshit cop stuff. But he's always there just going through their files exactly. and shit and nobody exactly. ever says anything to That's him. That's not how that works. <laughs> I'm like <laughs> And that one female cop wants his dick so hard. So where's my reward? You take it easy. Wouldn't want to get your husband riled up. He's bigger than me. I know she's super into him, and he just does. He, just, he either doesn't care, or whatever. But I was well, like, no, 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 because she's like, am I gonna get my reward? And he's like, I don't know. Your husband's gonna be in. Uh, like they're they're totally in. And then literally in that same scene when she leaves, he calls his girlfriend and says, "Are we on tonight?" Hi, Jamie, it's me. You know? Okay, I, real quick, I want to go back because we jumped over it, but the opening credits for this movie, <laughs> it comes on screen and it says, Overkill. O-E-R, kill. And then the V comes in, a big red V comes down oh, to make man. it overkill. And I'm like, what, what was, was the, the point? What was the point of that? I don't, what is the V? Because not, I was like, is this Because it looks cool. <laughs> Does it have anything to do with like the Yakuza? It's not a Y. It's a, I don't know. I was this is fucking t- doesn't look cool. Cause then I look. I read for five seconds. Overkill. Why does it say overkill? <laughs> it's so dumb. No. One of the the dude that they did shoot, they they got the the keys off him. I was I guess he had the keys to everything. It looked like he had a janitor's keys from like a high school or something like that. Yeah. It's just nothing but key after key, and they they come to the conclusion. Well, since obviously our special task force isn't doing anything. We've got to do it ourselves. Yeah. So they use the key to get into one of the head boss's houses and bug his table. And I'm like, how do they know that guys, they just knew it. That's, this is the thing where there's no setup for anything that ha- A- like actions just, just happen. Yeah. And I, it almost works in the sense of like, it. the movie drops us into in a chain of events in real life, but only shows us really random parts of it to the point where they don't set up any narrative and we have no idea what's going on. But like, it's just like, and we're going to watch this happen now. 
And but it all probably makes sense within the world, but we just don't get to know anything about who any of these people are or what they're doing or anything. It's just it's just there. It just yep. happens. Yep. And I also love after they so the there's a kid at the there's a kid at the um at the restaurant yeah, and it was his the, uh, it was his the, sister and his grandpa I think or something like something that that like got that. shot. It's the the son of the woman who pulled the gun. Oh, okay. So yeah. it was his mom. I mm-hmm. right, right. His mom and his grandpa. I don't know, whatever. And and uh but he he sees all this happen, and they get him back to the station. And one of the police officers is asking him questions. Yeah. And the, and the, and our main guy, and this is his character arc. He goes from kind of racist to a little less racist. Is well, he won't he won't talk to you. They all stick together, and it's like, let's go, Steiner. You're wasting your time. The kid's not going to talk to you. They stick together like glue. That, why wouldn't he? If he doesn't talk, it's because he's scared for his life. Not because he doesn't. He's protecting the people that killed his family because yeah. they're also Japanese. I love how super Australian his uh, partner is at that point. Yeah, like he's he's really Australian throughout yeah. the film, but in that scene, he is super Australian. Yes, yes, it's great. The man kills both your dad and your sister, and you don't remember how he looked. So they've bugged this phone or bug bug the area. They have a microphone and they're getting all these uh, things in. Apparently. Hall knows Japanese. Oh yeah! And during that scene when they're bugging it, it opens up on like the crime boss guy in a jacuzzi. And there's like a lot of hot tubs in this movie, yeah. which is weird. It's... But they're eating sushi in a hot tub, and I was like, "That's fucking disgusting." <laughs> I, I the hot tubs are filthy and disgusting. And I do not want to eat raw, raw fish, fish. <laughs> while I'm sitting in a hot tub. That is fucking disgusting. <laughs> but um I love I love when they come in and there's literally two people off camera that come in on different angles yeah. that could have seen any of yes. this. Yes. Yes. And they bug cuz later they they find the bug eventually. And it's so obvious because they bug they put it underneath a glass <laughs> top table. <laughs> Worst you guys are the ever. worst detectives undercover. You literally stuck this thing to the <laughs> underside of a glass table, and later, like the maid is cleaning, and she goes, "Oh, look oh, what look, I clearly I found." found. What the fuck? You guys suck. They they get that these uh, this yakuza family owns a kind of like a brothel or. Yeah, it's, it's well, a, I like, thought they said it was a casino, house. but it's very clearly a brothel. Let's give a call set up for Yeah, maybe we can get some pussy. Yeah, so they go in and make, they go in and make a, a, an appointment. And then they start playing, and then they lay around and play cards together. <laughs> they play goldfish all the time. That one guy is super obsessed with, co- like, poker and cards. He always, always has, has cards. Them. Always has Always. There's a scene later when they're in the car, <laughs> and they're driving down the highway, and he just has a hand of cards out. <laughs> Don't forget to load your gun this time. Put those cards away, will you? John Owens is like, can you put those damn cards away for a yeah. second? <laughs> like, what are you even playing? <laughs> you can't, you're just sitting there holding a hand of cards. You're like, what is wrong with you? So but they, that's his character thing, I, I guess. Whatever. For so a, they go in and <laughs> his partner is like, just basically taking advantage of the situation. Yeah, he starts sleeping or like making out with one of the, a topless sex worker. And, and <laughs> I just I love this. I don't know if this is what you're going to say. <laughs> But the main guy, the mustache guy, yeah, looks so keeps... jealous. <laughs> <laughs> He's laying on the bed watching his partner. And I don't mean jealous of his partner. I mean jealous of her getting to be with his partner. Because I am pretty sure they are super into each other. <laughs> he just keeps looking up. He's like, all right, don't invite me. Yeah, <laughs> I know. He's like the third. He's like, oh, you guys, you still sucking on her nipples? <laughs> Okay. <laughs> and then the next hard cut, super hard cut, they pull out guns. Freeze! Yes! It start that, but This whole scene, I, this is what I wrote down. I was like, the editing. And this yeah. is, is the first time. Which I like, initially thought they were in the same room. I didn't know what, I didn't know what any of this was. It's just like, guns are out, and then people are getting, sh- like, pushed around, and then, like, there's, like, and then there's a bunch of the 
worker girls. And, uh, it, it is so j- jumbled and disjointed and like every the, the 180 degree rule for anybody who knows the film is where you don't j- jump across an invisible line because it disorients your audience. Yeah. Th- this they was fucked all that over rule. the place. They, they, they made up the 360 rules. Like, We're going to put a camera wherever we want, whatever we want. We'll put it upside down on the ceiling. We'll shoot it up your butthole. And then we'll, it just, it, it fucking, I was the whole time like, I don't know where anything is they happening. Fucking, they fucking, like four of them mob his partner and he's like, Pulling the trigger, nothing's happening, and he's like, "Sorry, I forgot to load my gun." Steiner, what the hell are you doing? I forgot to load my gun. Yeah. What kind of fucking? What cop are you? No, maybe he didn't do it on purpose. I, it, it was so weird. The whole beginning of this movie, I was just confused and like, I was like, "What? What is? What is? Where are we going with this?" And it goes real weird, but it's like, where are we going with this? But they were able to get like rack up these people from charges, and they got more information about a drug deal going down. So they go in. To buy out a, to buy a, a shitload of coke, and holy a big shocker, it was like a sting or like some sort of like a setup by the yakuza or somebody. Yeah. And they just <laughs> fire two rounds into Daryl Hall's back. Go! Oh, it just happened so quick. His main his buddy gets killed in the first. 20 minutes in the movie. Well, he, like, gets shot in the back and then stumbles backwards and falls into a pool and he's just <laughs> surrounded by his cards as he slowly Yes, I was dies. like, that's the reason he had cards, just so he could have a cool moment where he falls into a pool and they're all floating down around like, him. Like, I saw I saw that happen and he's, like, holding everybody, you know, at gunpoint and then these people, these two women come out of the side with fucking knives and throwing, throwing knives them. And he shoots one <laughs> in the fucking head! He just kills one of them, which I mean, they're throwing knives at you. Fair enough, I guess. But it was just, I there's so many times like that where I'm like, what, what, what is, what is going on? This movie's fucking bonkers. And like, there's you know, earlier scene, our main character in the whorehouse, he's there's he's like shaking down the whorehouse runner, yeah. and he's like fucking manhandling yeah, this woman, grabbing her, grabbing her fan, like no, 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 you, you're a cop, you can't do that. <laughs> in the 80s just fucking just beat around the people you arrest born in california and i'm gonna defend it so daryl hall's dead yes <laughs> now now oats is just a solo act and, and right before us we find out that uh the guy just above our guy or like the, the, the superior above not the chief oh, the, but the i thought he was the chief initially but the guy with the really weird looking yeah the hair. guy the guy ahead of a ta- the head of the task force yes yeah. I, we find out that he's he's not really in i thought initially he was in bed with the i gang. thought he was but it seems like he just he just doesn't know just like he thinks like, they're business people or like yeah. he's, just, he's like willfully maybe like not you know but what apparently I mean? he's fluent in japanese i'm not yoko yeah, but I, I guess he's like willfully, you know, he just doesn't want to, he just like, oh, they're just businessmen and he, and he doesn't want to think that there's some big, you know, crime gang going on. But anyways, that it, that's, it comes back and is important later, but. So our main dude, now he's got to get, now he has, re, you know, revenge on his mind of sorts. Yeah. And he goes back to that restaurant. That's where we meet the samurai cop, basically. <laughs> This dude is 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 like the most like stepped out of just the craziest samurai film He's I've ever seen. Kind of awesome and kind of crazy, and I wasn't expecting that character in this movie because he just is all of a sudden this like. Yeah, samurai. He's a he's a cop from Tokyo. Yeah, the the, mean, the kid's uncle. Yeah, flew in, and he flew in to like get get honor for his family and avenge his yeah sister and whatever being killed. I am Akashi. I am the brother of Hayaki's mother. I'm Japanese. But, and yet yeah, he's, he's something else. He becomes our new partner to our guy. Hey, I'm flying back to Tokyo tomorrow. Why? Did you kill Taguchi? No, but I'll kill him before I leave. I also, I real quick want to talk about, so after they find the bug, she finds the bug, they go and they trash. He's a part, yeah. Like, how did they know? Oh, what? How did the scenes just happen? Like, yes, like yeah. he comes back to his apartment and it's, and, it's, the, and it's trash. It's like, how did the how, entire time I was like, hang up the phone, hang up the phone, hang up the phone. Yeah, Cause right. that loud fucking noise yes. of a phone off the hook. So then they just tell him you you should, well, this is before, I think this is before he meets that guy. Yeah, it is. Cause they tell him you should take a couple days off. 
Collins thinks you ought to take a little time off. A little time off? The, our main cop. Yeah, yeah. They're yeah. like, you should take some days off. And it immediately hard cuts to him drunk next to his pool. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I should take a little vacation. I mean, it's not like you're out there busting your ass because you're... With the, the guy who the just dude. told him to take yeah, a day off. Yeah, yeah. And he gets up and they hug each other. I'm like, you don't like him. What is happening? Why? And th that entire scene served no other purpose than to be an Ajax commercial. Yeah. <laughs> And then, yeah, and then, he, and then he walks into the kitchen with his girlfriend, and he's like... Oh, like gonna... Right in front of this bottle of Ajax. Hey, yeah. product placement. Yeah. Use Ajax, the foaming cleanser. So they're they're after this guy now. They're they're after the main dude because he knows things. So yeah. they send in the, the dude who killed the uh, restaurant owners and another dude to take care of... To take care of uh, our guy. John Oates, yeah. whatever. Um, and Mickey. Tokyo Cop yeah. is following him. yeah. And then they start firing just into the house, or... Again, like, it's edited so poorly that it's hard to tell who's I shooting at who and, and I thought what. he was in the kitchen, because he was eating, like, a thing. Yeah. I, I honestly I don't it's I said it's edited so poorly that it's like okay who's shooting it who and it, but then all of a sudden somebody gets shot but it was the good cop from Tokyo shot one of the bad guys yeah but not the main not the main bad, main guy, bad guy just one so of they the fuck, bad they guys. cut a you like a he cuts a cross in his yeah, head and, and says then it's they, a they, scarlet whatever. no it's a sign of the phoenix sign of the phoenix yeah, yeah. yeah. and then to dump his body off in front of the yakuza house yeah saying, they just leave his body there like Whoop. you just made this a thousand times worse right and i'm like this dude is fucking nuts this dude is fucking nuts the sign of the phoenix when he meets when he first meets that guy the tokyo cop he goes to the restaurant uh, uh, mickey the main character mm -hmm. goes to the restaurant where the people died um because he wants to talk to the kid again to try to figure out more, find out more information. The guy that's working at the at the restaurant goes, "We're closed. You can't, you can't talk. He's not here. You can't talk to him." I need to talk to the kid. Is he around? I'm Detective Delano. Sorry, we are closed. And then it, the scene, it it cuts. It it like it, he go, he walks away from. I'm just, it's so mind blowing and confusing that I'm having a hard time describing. <laughs> the guy goes, "We're closed," and it very clearly indicates like, "Fuck you. I don't want you around here. Get out of here." So he walks to the back of the restaurant. The following shot, he walks to the back of the restaurant. The kid walks out of the back and just starts talking to him. Yes? I'm like, what was that whole interaction? What was that? What was that? Why did that guy turn into Doc John Tron a little bit? What? 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 <laughs> So many. What was the point of that what scene? What was the point of that? Why did you have that conversation with that? Ugh. And that's when he meets the uncle. And then yeah, all that stuff happens. So they need to make their presence known to the yakuza. Yeah. Not like they haven't already. But he like gets the main dude's son, pulls him off to the side at this pool party, and cuts off his fucking ear. <laughs> yeah, cuts his ear off. And I was like, what? Wait, what? <laughs> what is this going on? Why you just cut that guy's ear off? So that's how you deal with the Yakuza, huh? That guy. And then he puts it into a little bag like a fucking crazy person. He's a crazy person. He's a crazy person, but he's our hero, but he's a crazy person. It's a start. I may have to collect other body parts to get their full attention. All right, so real quick, the... Uh... When they when the when the two gangsters go to kill Oates at his house while he's on leave or whatever, there's a shot. He comes back from the restaurant after finding meeting the uncle for the first time. He walks into his house and it's literally this is the shot we get. He walks into his kitchen, he takes his shirt off, and he pulls some milk out of the fridge and starts <laughs> drinking it, and then the scene ends. <laughs> in that moment he takes his shirt off and then drinks milk and then it ends and i was like why was that in the movie and then there's a shot when they are coming to kill him he's pointing there's some ants on the yeah, counter he just points a and gun he's pointing at a gun at him and he's like Phew. 
And I'm like, you're gonna try to be artistic now, movie. You're gonna have this like moment of like the ants or the criminal underbelly, and he just wishes he could just annihilate him as easy as he could annihilate these ants on the. It, it, like, what is that? Why yeah. are we doing this now in this movie? Hell, I don't know. It's some influential white man. Well, yeah, but I wanna. Did we talk about? Are they driving? Anyways, there's a scene who fucking knows where it goes. It could go anywhere in the movie. I don't care. Uh, there's a scene where when the Tokyo cop and our cop are driving somewhere, he goes, they're talking, and the guy says something like sayonara. The Tokyo cop says yeah. sayonara. And the, guy, and, and the fucking Oats goes, like, what's that huh? mean? Sayonara. Sayonara. What does that mean? Goodbye. What? And I'm like... How do you not know what sayonara means? You work a beat in fucking the Jap- Japanese town in your... In your city, you don't know what the word sayonara means? You've never you've never heard the word sayonara. I mean, that's sayonara. obviously written for the audience to be like, oh, I learned something about Japanese today. I was, I was, I was like, even in, I don't fuck care when this 80s, whenever, everybody knows what the fuck the word sayonara means. Yeah, there is a Marlon Brando film from the 50s called Sayonara. Yeah, I was, I was like, what? God, that was like the hardest thing to believe in this whole movie and we're about to talk about a scene where a kid gets shot 40 times in the chest from three feet away and fucking lives and that's more believable <laughs> than the fucking guy not knowing that sayonara what sayonara means because that's what fucking happens they're in the restaurant getting a, getting their drink on like yeah we're partners we're partners talking about like Japanese cutting people's ears off and being the, awesome. The Japanese first they infiltrate you and then they become better, better than you. you. <laughs> See, first the Japanese imitate you, then they get better than you. What? I guess that's a saying or a. a... So they hear some people come in. These dudes, shirtless, glistening, have gun holsters and machine guns, pop in and just fucking start firing on this kid. Stop. kid walks out or is standing there and they're like a foot away from him and they have uzis and they and brrr, just fucking unload into his chest and i'm like oh the kid died that's brutal he's not dead i was like would they like pick him up they pick him up after, and these guys just Let, run away they don't kill him let's talk about how not dead this kid is he's shot 40 times from a foot away they put him into the back of a car where he's bleeding to bleeding death. Bleeding to death. Then they take him not to a hospital. They don't take him to a hospital. They take him to a crystal healer. Because magic exists in this movie, Kyle. <laughs> what is he doing? He's uh, using crystals. It's an ancient art of healing. They t- and I was like, wait, there's magic now? <laughs> they take him to this But then, like, guy. you see where he's patched up? He's got a collapsed lung. <laughs> One of those bullets went through his lung. <laughs> through all of both of his lungs and his heart and every... He could, they sh- <laughs> when he gets shot, there was bullet holes everywhere. He gets hit, like, 30 times. <laughs> I'm like, what... Everybody else who in this movie who gets shot and dies gets shot, like, once or twice, and they're dead instantly. Yes. This kid gets shot 30 times in the chest what? from two feet away, and he's <laughs> fucking fine. Well, he's not fine, but he's mostly fine. I don't understand. It's oh, so weird. God. I wrote this director is fucking obsessed with sweaty glistening men. Not that I'm not that I'm upset with him. I'm just saying he's obsessed with sweaty glistening oily men cuz they are in every everything. Scene. Oats wardrobe is literally just blue jeans and a cut off like army vest like it's it's a ja- like an army jacket almost that he cut the sleeves off of. Yeah. And he doesn't wear a shirt underneath that. Yeah. And then, then the cop, when he's back in the police department, he talks to the female officer that he's clearly banging and says, the guy I'm working with now, this Japanese, he's fuck, he's crazy. Yeah. He is insane. Mm-hmm. And we got, she's like, we gotta, I gotta step up my game. And she suggests an undercover thing for him because he's gotta uh, do his undercover. I don't know, maybe a new cover or something. The old cover was pretty outrageous. Which one? The strip joint. Are you fucking nuts? I wouldn't do that for love or money. Mm-hmm. She's like, you could be a male stripper. 
Because he used to. That's one of his old covers. It's like, oh, you used to be a male stripper, so you can just do that again. And then it hard cuts, and he's just fucking going at it. Oh, really? Well, in that case... Oh, first timer! <laughs> like, in the club, like, he what? instantly got the job, and, like, they... Or he instantly was able to coordinate it with the owner or whatever, so that he could strip in this... I think the only reason this is in the movie is because that guy is actually a male stripper in real life, or was for a while. And I looked up this guy. Because he's actually good at it. <laughs> I looked up this guy... He's been in a bunch of, of, of 80s films and, and 70s films. His name's Steve Rally. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's just like, I'm looking at this, I'm like, what? Like, how bad did you need money that you're taking this movie? Hang around, ladies. Talk dirty to him. Talk dirty to him. I, I maybe because it, it, it has elements to it that are interesting and I, he's not bad a lot of the acting actually isn't bad in this movie which was weird I was I was expect it, like it's not good but it's not like there's not like a lot of off not like high kicks and fucking Jill my god Sandy he's right okay so there's a scene too this might be before, before he strips I don't I, I I knew this was going to be hard with this movie, even with my notes, of going, okay, wait, did we talk about that scene? Does that scene come next? Because the scenes are all so all disjointed that it's like, I, I I don't remember what came before what. But there's a scene where after they shoot the kid, they're, we're at the, with the gangsters, the uh, Yakuza, and they're yeah. like, an innocent kid died. I like, assume he died dead. like a normal And that, the audience is thinking he's dead too. Yeah, and that's why I was like, wait, is he dead? But I'm like, okay, I guess they wouldn't know. They just left. But... Th- their innocent kid died. Somebody has to pay the price. Somebody killed an innocent kid. Somebody's gonna have to pay the price. And so the shirtless dudes at a at a table. One of them just cuts his fucking and finger just, off. Yeah, he just cuts his finger off. <laughs> and I, there's this random woman who only shows up when somebody's got to get a, a an organ or a thing cut off. That that woman. Who with long hair and she like slides him a knife across the table. I don't know who that is. No, you, you only find out later that that's the the mafia dude's daughter. That's his daughter. That's his daughter, and they they talk about it later because they they bring her in to kill uh, Mickey's girlfriend. Yes. What's that, oh, that scene? We'll talk about that fucking scene. Is weird. The guy cuts his finger off, and I was like, wait. So this guy, why did he shoot that kid if he knew that that. Ki- like, cause he, if it wasn't that some, he could see the other two people at the bar that he's here to kill or one of them or whatever. And then the kid's just standing there. And so he just turns and unloads into the kid. And I'm like, if you knew that it was an, you knew that that kid didn't have anything to do with it. Also, well, okay. So is it just kids that can't die innocently? Cause that old man caught it right in the dome. <laughs> He wouldn't do anything. He didn't pull a gun on anybody. Watching your brain try to grasp any of this, <laughs> is, it's great. <laughs> this movie fucking make any sense. Kills a guy daytime again. That's a note I have because it's just daytime <laughs> randomly again. Uh, oh, and then, so there's, what after the stripper thing... He starts spying on somebody else who's like a drug dealer or something, which this shit doesn't make oh, any sense. Yeah, yeah. When he's com- <laughs> comically <laughs> large <laughs> binoculars. They're fucking enormous. I know binoculars were that big back then, but it's it's still hilarious to look at them because they do not look real. They look the, like on a cartoon he's character. Wa- he's with- watching drug deals go off and he, you know, whatever racetrack, he's all over the place. Then there's a scene where he stops on a road. And yeah. then he gets out of his car, and literally a hundred feet away is people just beating the shit out of a guy. Yeah. And he clearly has these giant binoculars. Giant binoculars, and it's a binocular montage. <laughs> we didn't get enough montages and high kicks with aerobics. Now we got fucking binocular montages. And the music in this scene, this might be the worst movie music editing that I have ever seen. The music just cuts out and comes back in randomly. The same song repeats, but it just it just randomly chops and cuts in and out and I'm yeah, dying. It just, it's so, it, it begins and ends so abruptly. For no reason. I'm like, you you had more song. You like, could have kept it going. It's not, like it's, it's not like it's a super annoying song. It's, it's because not the I worst. Because I was beating to it. And then it just You're stopped. I was like, it, Cal. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I wouldn't blame him if you were beating it to this movie. I was keeping with the rhythm. I, I, I liked it enough to where I was keeping with the rhythm. And then it just hit it. That's I how like, I jerk off, too. I, I keep was, to the rhythm of whatever song is playing. I, after, it, after it just abruptly stopped, I was like, oh. Oh, it's over. And then it would come back in again, though. But it was so fucking yeah. weird. So then... <laughs> so, he sees the gang, the Yakuza... Um, they find a local drug dealer taking out the competition, I think, is the idea. Well, he was dealing for them, and he, like, I guess was skimming or something nah, like something that. Something like that. Anyway, so they they, they, he, they grab they, this drug dealer while he's watching them, and they take him out to this mountain road. Yes. And I'll let you describe what happens. if you They can take him out. They have him and, I'm assuming, his girlfriend, whatever, yeah. or one of his bitches. Anyways, they put a trash bag over his head and spin him around. <laughs> Then he gets in the car, pulls back a little, and then floors it over him. And hits him with the car! Is this... I have so many questions. Okay, so up to this point, they've just been shooting people and killing people when they needed to kill people. Why did they do this? What is this... First, first, first! Sorry. I have a lot of strong opinions about this scene. First... What is the point of the trash bag? I guess I get the point of the trash bag is so that he can't see that they're driving a car at him, him, and he doesn't run away. But if that's the case, why you did can you spin hear. him? Why did you spin him so he can't run? But because he's doing a pinata. All of this, that was just like, boy, this, that is the most convoluted way to kill a person. Just fucking shoot him. <laughs> You don't have a problem with the other people. Yeah, you just shoot anybody else that you don't want to kill. Why would you... Why are you fucking hitting guys with cars and trash bags? Is this... (sighs) Is this part of Yakuza stuff? Like, is this their thing that they do? Do they just run over people? Yeah, that's like... This must be, like, a thing that, like, Yakuza's do, and so they put it in the movie. You know what I mean? Because, like, otherwise it's such a random, weird thing. So they need to get the main guy's attention. They go in and kidnap his wife. Yes. And chop off one of his son's fingers. Yes. They're just taking body parts. And that's what he says. He says something like, I'm just going to keep going until I get all your body parts or something weird. I, there's some line like that at some point. But yeah, they kidnap the, the gang leader, the Yakuza's wife. And the, this is like the next couple of scenes of being like nothing really being accomplished. There's scenes where he's talking with the police chief who doesn't really, who says he's going to help but doesn't. Doesn't. There's scenes where he's talking with the police force who don't want to give him any like leeway with right. anything. Yeah. There's scenes where his girlfriend wants to see him. Yeah. Okay. There's one scene I want to talk about. <laughs> there's there's a scene like in this in this period you're talking about where the Asia uh, the the Tokyo cop guy is sitting there with his sword <laughs> and he's talking about he starts listing ways to die. Yes. Imagining one's final hour and various ways of dying by bow and arrow gun and it goes on so long that i thought we were literally <laughs> gonna sit and listen to this guy list I, every way to who die who was he talking to in that i don't know i to, think to our, oats? Our, the oats guy i think because like, if it wasn't then why isn't why isn't he saying this in japanese i don't know also why aren't there subtitles in this film i maybe it was our version but yeah there are no subtitles and there are scenes where there are like two minute scenes of the gang talking and you don't get to know anything of what they said <laughs> But he's listing all these ways to die, and I'm sitting there, and they're all like dramatic ways to Fall die. Fall off a cliff. And Falling off a cliff. And I'm like, I want him to be like, trip on roller skate, hit head, die. <laughs> <laughs> Joke yourself. I don't know what accent I'm doing, but I, <laughs> they turn into Russian. Turkish. It sounds weird. But like, swallowed up by the sea choke yourself with belt while well, masturbating, masturbating because it's the only way you can feel anything anymore <laughs> and go a little too far <laughs> now you die <laughs> jumping into a fire 
being struck by lightning. Crush. By an earthquake. And then they have another scene in this part. <laughs> this might be my favorite scene, honestly. This might be my favorite just because of how it plays out and I could see it coming. I don't know. There, it's right. Hall and Oates, or Oates and uh, Tokyo Cop are sitting there in a, in a room after they kidnapped that woman just talking to each other. And and this is and Oates goes like, um, I had an uncle. I never met him. <laughs> he died in Pearl Harbor. You know, I had an uncle once. His name was Joey. He died before I was born. He was in the Navy, Pearl Harbor. Eating, eating, eating his breakfast. Eating breakfast. He had died with uh, blood and scrambled and... eggs in his mouth. He was eating breakfast. They found him dead with scrambled eggs in his mouth mixed with blood. And then the camera goes over to Tokyo Cop, and I was like, oh no. Japanese fighter pilots killed him. I had an uncle too. His name was Sataki. And an aunt, grandfather, and grandmother. He's gonna and talk about Hiroshima? Yes, I was like... <laughs> Oh, we're going to get into the suffering Olympics here. So you just had your uncle die. Yeah. Hang on a second. Yeah. I had an uncle, my father, my grandmother turned to yeah. ash. Yeah, he's like, they didn't get to eat breakfast. They didn't have scrambled eggs in their mouths mixed with blood. They had nuclear dust in their lungs. So they just got hit by a fucking nuclear bomb. I was like, oh, no. One single American plane dropped a bomb. Oh, oh it's, you walked right into that one, dude. Mic drop. <laughs> I, I was like, you had to have seen that one coming because it was so obvious where that was going. And I was like, oh, Jesus Christ. They all died before I was born. Like your Uncle Joey. They didn't have scrambled eggs in their mouths. They're coming to the, to the deal like the mafia boss wants his wife back. So he's willing to give up the other heads of the family who are coming in yeah, for a big The five meeting. families or something like that. Which is like the thing from uh, from The Office. I don't know if you want to see The Office. No. But he says like the five heads, the five families or whatever. The heads of the five most important families are coming to Los Angeles tomorrow. Which there's the thing in The Office where the five families or four families is like all the people that run the industrial park they're in. And it's like, it's like, anyways, it made me think of that. Take my finger, my ears. Dismember me from head to toe. I am not afraid. So he's willing to give up all the information he has to get his wife back. So they find out that the police chief's involved. Mm -hmm. So they have the Tokyo cop go tail the police chief. And Oates goes, gets his, uh, the head of his task force. Yeah. And they're like, we, we, we're going to show you this kind of corrupt shit that's going down. <laughs> There's a scene. Where they're, they get, all the Tokyo families get into like a Rolls Royce or whatever and drive it to this. And there's a scene where they, after they pick up the Tokyo cop, where they're all three in the front seat. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, knew, they had to all ride in the front seat so that the camera guy could be in the back seat. <laughs> they're all screaming. I didn't even think of that. <laughs> I can't wonder how they determined which one had to ride bitch. Because <laughs> they're all just like <laughs> squeezed into the front seat going, going on our mission. <laughs> Before they go, you missed this, we skipped the scene where, where, where his girlfriend dies. She dies in the best. Okay, so they, they, the Mafia family talk to uh, the, the, the daughter. And they basically are like, we need you to go take care or, or send a message to, to Mickey. You haven't said anything all day, Dad. What are you thinking of? We must find another way to get at Delano. So she like she's like under the covers in her <laughs> room. She calls uh, the girlfriend calls Oates and is like, oh, I can't wait to see you again. Yeah, and yeah. he's like, okay, I'll come see you. And she walks back into her bedroom. And when she walked into that room, I was like, there's something under the sheet. Yes, there's clearly <laughs> something under the bed. I was like, there's there... clearly something in the bed what under the cover. It? What is in your bed? As when she gets down, 
fucking t and just stab the living <laughs> shit out of her. <laughs> Stabs her in the throat and then she's dead and they don't even address it. I don't, like, no, he finds did, out. Yeah, he's like, oh, I'm sad. He sees like, her and he's sad a little bit, and it's like, he's fine. He gets over people dying in this movie really, really quick. quick. Like, his partner dies, he's like, fuck, I don't care. Fuck, whatever. And then his girlfriend dies, he's like, man, fuck, I wasn't... She was a side piece, I don't care. So they're they're looking at the police chief make these deals, basically. And so this is when all the family are together. And everybody's decked out in nice suits. They have showed up in nice cars. And then this dude is still shirtless, wearing, like... Oh white slacks yes and then there's also where we realized because we never really talked about it. we mentioned the police chief was crooked but the police chief in this movie has to be the first time i saw him i was like this guy like he's talking to him our, our cops talking to him in his office and i'm and i was like is who is this? is this supposed to be the police chief oh it's the police chief one he's not wearing a uniform no but he's the most schlubby unintimidating police chief. he's Didn't always looks dirty his shirts about ready to yeah, burst and his off shirt him? is four sizes too small for him the buttons are like no ah! <laughs> and he just, he's just sweaty and gross <laughs> and i'm like this is the worst looking police you couldn't find anybody who looked a little bit like an, an imposing political police chief figure this i like, like how this grimy guy i like how encouraging he is the oats he's like son we need boys like you and our uh, you know behind us we we need we need people like you to fit yeah. in our country yeah. now you hang in there boy this country needs men like you yeah and then he gets his comeuppance yeah at the end. i also love the so as they're this is as they're going to the thing or right before they're about to go to the final mission the, the tokyo cop goes look i might die if I should die. Yeah. If I die, <laughs> I trust the destiny of my nephew to you. You cannot sign yourself up to die any harder at that point. I put Hayaki's destiny in your hands. That, yes. And you met this guy a week ago, and he's kind of a racist fuck up cop who just is shirtless all the time why do you think he'd be a good for raising a good for raising your kid or you're not your kid i was like what what i put hayaki's destiny in your hands so they get in there the, the, the one dude who's clearly the super american guy they have but they couldn't they couldn't find any other japanese people they, they just put him in like a, a mask. mask he goes up he's like he hears something and then the fucking Tokyo cop decapitates it. Cuts his head off. Straight cuts his head off. And I was like, oh, oh. And then they all storm in. And I love how the, the, the immediately after that, the cut immediately after that is they storm in and he has a gun drawing and his sword sheathed. And, like, <laughs> fuck? and then, so there's a standoff, basically. <laughs> His, intim his intimidation is katana in one hand, gun in the other. That would intimidate me. Yeah. <laughs> if a guy had a gun and a katana. And you think they have it all set up. They have it all wrapped up. No, dude comes out with a machine gun, fires three rounds into Tokyo Cop's and back. And falls into a pool and then the he falls exact same way. Exactly the exact same way. I was like, oh, this guy cannot. You do not want to be Oates' partner. You do not no. want to be Hall. Don't be, don't be near a pool and don't be his partner. <laughs> yeah. And all I could do this whole time was like, take him to the magic guy. He got shot twice, but he, no, 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 we can't take him to the magic guy. But I was like, oh, you fucking shit movie. <laughs> Whenever he pops up out of the pool to get his revenge yes, on the dude. that was sweet. That looked like it was in reverse. Wasn't that, it, it, uh, <laughs> it looks real sweet, though. He's like, Wah! Wah! <laughs> and oh. stabs the sword into the guy that killed so his family. Dead. And then he dies. And then the police chief runs off, yeah, yeah. and our guy's chasing and him Mickey down a just... hill, and he shoots him once or twice with a gangster's gun, I think. Yeah, because he swapped. There's a scene where he swaps his gun mm -hmm. out before they go so that he doesn't have his cop gun, I guess. And then he uh, he wings the police, chief of police in L.A. or wherever the fuck this yeah. is, or the precinct of L.A., and the guy's laying on the ground. And he says, I'll testify against them for you. He says, like, oh, you will have died a hero. I'm going to testify that you were against these guys. You helped us raid this place. You're even going to get a hero's funeral. Basically, like, oh. Why? I don't know why. That doesn't make any sense. He's like, oh, I guess because he thought maybe, like, it would be too hard to prove that the chief was crooked. 
but it's easy just to kill him and say, he died a hero. Maybe is the idea. I don't know. But he fucking shoots him in the face. He just kills the chief of police. Now you think you're a fucking hero, huh? How about that? I didn't shoot you, you fucking happy asshole. It just, bam, dead. And I'm like, wow, all right, sweet. I just wrapped that up. That guy's dead. He picks up his dude who's like bleeding to death, Tokyo Cop, throws him into the back of the car and drives off. As Tokyo Cop is dying in the back yeah. car, he's like... You know, we're not all the same. There are good and bad. And just dies. Yeah, and then that's... And I'm like, if I was John Oates, this would be the way back of my mind at this point, but I would think this... I gotta get my car reupholstered. Because there, <laughs> <laughs> there are so many bloody people in his car in this movie. There's like there's like the dude who they cut the symbol yep. into. There was the, the kid. kid with the there was bullet. this dude. There was the guy who gets his hand cut off later. It's gonna be... He's going to be scraping blood and brain bits out like Pulp Fiction for the next fucking year. So he dies in the back of the car and he takes this, and this death actually hard. And on the ground on no. the highway. <laughs> and then he says, I got nothing. He's talking to somebody. He says, I got nothing but a samurai sword and a promise to fulfill. <laughs> Look, Mary Beth, I got nothing left. Nothing but an old samurai sword and a promise to fulfill. So he picks up, like, Kendo. Isn't that, isn't that it? This... Oh! I, yes, he forgot. I forgot about this. He get, he goes to a studio where a guy is doing yeah some sort of traditional like katana sword. He picks up. He just like watches them. Yes, and then the next he's doing it. Yes. <laughs> and the look on his face is so. <laughs> <laughs> and he's just, but I'm like, well, you, you don't just go one time to a studio where a guy's doing sword fighting and watch for five minutes and then you can do it. And also, you know, not, okay, big shocker people, katanas are shitty weapons in a world of semi-automatics. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. And then he helps the kid run the sushi place. And so he's like getting, he's taking an order to get a bunch of stuff. And then he leaves in his bitchin' blazer. Yeah, he's good. this is the Miami Vice blazer. And then a dude is, um. Oh, he does kill a guy with the sword. This guy. Or yeah. he cuts his finger off. Um, I don't know. Right? There's a guy gets yeah, no, into his well, car. No, he's, he, basically this dude was sent, I think he's one of the sons of the, the dude. Anyways, he goes in, pulls a gun of a guy who's, for some reason, admiring his sword in his car. He's looking at his sword, and this guy could shoot him at any time, yeah. but he doesn't. Just pulls out his, pulls his arm forward, chops off his arm, That's and leans right. back. Sayonara. Sayonara. And he <laughs> drops the sayonara, and I was like, oh, movie. Oh, you movie. I fucking hate you. <laughs> and then the head of the Yakuza come down and say, can you please stop killing us for a while? Yeah. Just stop killing us. Yeah, the Yakuza show up and they're like, and he's wearing his dumb fucking chef hat. <laughs> he's wearing the dumbest No fucking... soup for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and he's like wearing his dumb fucking chef hat. I'm like, you can't just, you... Movie, you can't just be a sushi chef. That is hard shit. This guy was an undercover cop and a male stripper. You can't just be, be a, like, he's not just, oh, I'm a sushi chef now. The shots of him are so close up and I can only imagine is that they thought the hat looked really fucking dumb. Because <laughs> it does. He looks ridiculous. And they're like, let's just keep it close. So let's not show any of that. Oh, and then this is what you're talking about where they're getting the list and the kid just after the list is like, I think it's the list. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, you're right. No, he's the... like, you seem really down in the, after they make the after deal, they, they the make truth. the deal, he's like, I he's won't like, kill you. You seem really down in the dumps, kid. What's wrong? Now, come on, what's bothering you? Everything's going great. He goes, <laughs> I was not ready for this and I felt like <laughs> such an asshole for laughing. He goes, <laughs> Do you think I'll ever be able to walk again? Because he's in a wheelchair. Spoiler. Do you think I'll ever be able to walk again? He was paralyzed <laughs> when he got shot. And he goes, do you think I'll ever be able to walk again? And this movie, I was like, I, the guy goes, here, you know what? what? Let's go. Come here. He gets him and he throws him on a horse. <laughs> And I'm like, that's not walking. What? This is a living wheelchair. <laughs> you just put him on a living wheelchair. Uh, he's not walking now. 
I guess there's a little more freedom to it. <laughs> My fucking man kicks. But the way he throws him up on that horse, he's just like, <laughs> oh, like how flushed am I right now? I don't know, probably about as much oh, as I am. God. <laughs> uh, but that was the last note I had said. I said, that's not walking, that's just a living wheelchair. <laughs> the, and then I wrote, what a fucking weird ass movie. <laughs> and then, because that's not a movie. The yet. credits are pretty great because it starts with a cast. And then it does extra cast mm-hmm. for like the members. And then there's a huge break. Yep. And then it just goes the credits. The credits. <laughs> and everything else. So that's it. That's the movie. That's uh, High Kicks. No, what movie are we watching? <laughs> Overkill. Overkill. I know. I'm just John Oates and Overkill. <laughs> I'm just joking. It's Overkill, 1987. Uh, Kyle is Overkill. Good, bad, oh, or bad. Oh, bad. it's so close to being good, bad, but it's not. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah, I agree. I had a lot more fun looking back on it now than I remember when I watched it. <laughs> like, when I remember watching it's, it, thinking, this isn't very funny. This, this isn't is a very film good. that's fun to talk about, but not so much fun to yeah. watch. Yeah, yeah. I, I think this may be our best review yet, because we'll, it'll be only the fun, entertaining parts. Like, there are lots of movies we do that you can watch the movie and are a lot of fun. This one is not going to be that. I mean, I, it's all right. I don't know. It's. I agree. It's bad, bad. I think. If you have if you have a short attention span, this film's perfect for you because you won't know what the fuck's going on. Yes, anyways. that is true. Nobody knows what the fuck's going on. But yeah, I got to go bad, bad. It just because it's 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 a little too boring and it's a little too competent at times. Like it's it's shot a little. Not that it's shot great, but it's. The guy, know. the guy has a sense of direction. The director of it has yeah. a sense of what he wants. Yeah, it was shot clearly, and it was shot on film, so it looks, you know, not cheap. It doesn't look cheap, and, mm-hmm. and the settings are interesting enough and stuff like to where there's not enough, not like just bad movie stuff. Um, like the way, like the way fucking High Kicks is shot. It's like one idiot with a camera on a tripod pointing it at three people standing there. Like this has close. It has. The, it, it's shot like a film at times. Some of the shots are weird, and but in general. It, and so, like, with that, it it just doesn't rise above bad, bad, but kind of funny sometimes, I guess. Yeah, we can get some pussy. Wanted to once again recommend our good friends over at Three Wise Media. If you haven't checked them out, a podcast about comic books, movies, TV, everything nerdy in the world of pop culture. Also, uh, Movie Versus, they're another good friends of the podcast. Uh, they do a thing where they have, they two guys go watch a movie and then they argue about it. And then they try to convince the third guy to see their movie and not the other movie. Check those out. And as always, keep watching movies. Just maybe not really don't watch Overkill because it's kind of boring. You can watch this, our thing, and, and then feel like you watched it. Yeah, you did it. Good job. You're the best. Also, sorry, Nostalgia Critic. You'll never see this. But I'm sorry for stealing it. Away.